The next one is um, subcutaneous mass on the thigh of a middle-aged adult uh, woman. Uh, this is a fun case, but another one with the naming problem. So here you've got a nodule in the dermis and pushing into the subcutis, relatively small. It looks like this is almost completely kind of pulled out, like shelled out from the skin. From low power, you can see there are some cellular zones here, some less cellular, maybe pale myxoid areas. And as we go into higher power, the most striking thing about this tumor is look at the blood vessels. That's crazy amount of blood vessels, so many blood vessels in one place. Kind of thin to medium size, branching, plexiform, vascular network. Now this is not a vascular tumor, and that's an important distinction to make. Just because a tumor has prominent vascularity does not mean it is an endothelial tumor. And I think it's a really important skill for junior people here to learn, to tell apart, are the vessels neoplastic or are they the background vascular network of the neoplastic cells, okay? And here you can tell at closer look, the spindle cells, those are the tumor cells, and yes, the vessels are part of the tumor, but this is not an endothelial tumor, right? Those are endothelial cells. Clearly, each vessel is distinct from the background spindle cells. Now look how bland these tumor cells are. Bland, very, very bland, fibroblastic appearing spindle cells with a myxoid or maybe a demodus kind of pale background and a variable amount of collagen fibers and then very prominent vessels. No atypia, very low mitotic activity, essentially none. So there's a closer look. Some areas can be a little bit more cellular and fascicular, but still very bland. And sometimes you will get some entrapment of adipocytes within this tumor. So the, the pitfalls here are a couple. I think cytologically this looks like a benign tumor, but you might look at this and say, this, this looks like it should be something, but I don't know what it is, right? It has a very distinct appearance. You ever have that problem? I do all the time, and then it drives me crazy when I can't figure it out. And what I love about this is, um, uh, one of my mentors was uh, sitting with me at a use cap meeting. Oh, it was in Vancouver, the very same. And it was, I hope he won't mind. He doesn't watch YouTube, so it'll be fine. Mark Edgar, who again, I respect hugely. He was in that meeting. And I want to say someone at the International Society of Bone and Soft Tissue showed this right around the time this entity was first described. And this is called an angiofibroma of soft tissue. Aren't there other angiofibromas? Yes, there are like six of them. And they're all unrelated. So I'm sorry, I hate it, but I didn't name it, okay? But when they showed the tumor, Mark said, ah, that's what that was. And he was so excited because he said he had seen one like a year ago and he remembered because it looked like it should be something, right? And then once it was described, so I was, uh, that resonates with me, that feeling of like, that should be a thing. It's a thing, I just don't know what thing it is. And this is one of those. So um, these are benign benign and beautiful, but the reason to know about them is, number one, the mistake you don't want to make is when we see lots of branching vessels, we think of myxoid liposarcoma, right? Now, this tumor doesn't really look much like myxoid liposarcoma, if you've seen myxoid liposarcoma before. Also, myxoid liposarcoma is the vast majority are deep soft tissue tumors, usually in the deep musculature of the thigh of young to middle-aged adults. And in fact, if I see a mix, something I think is myxoid liposarcoma in any other site or any other situation, I do molecular to prove it. In the deep thigh of a young adult, I feel like myxoid liposarcoma is an H&E diagnosis. But in other locations, I want to prove with molecular. I've personally never, I've seen many myxoid liposarcomas. I've never seen one in the skin or the subcutis. It has been reported, but I have never seen one personally as someone who's done soft tissue pathology for almost 10 years. So um, that's one argument. Also, the vessels here are thicker than the vessels of myxoid liposarcoma. Myxoid liposarcoma should be the most thin, delicate, tiny little vessels you can imagine. They're like one endothelial cell thick. 
If you touch the vessel, it would just break apart. It's that thin. These vessels are thicker than that. And number two, mixed with liposarcoma, the vascular network is not this vascular, it's less vascular. So smaller vessels and not nearly so many packed so closely. The other thing is that myxoid liposarcoma usually has round to oval nuclei evenly spaced from one another in a myxoid background. This tumor has more elongated spindled nuclei and they're a bit more cellular with more collagen. So I, I have a myxoid liposarcoma. If you, um, oh, I didn't tell you, but if you look on my, you probably noticed if you're on, on Kiko, oh, where is it? If you look over here to the side on any of, any of the cases, it shows my other posts. So I've got a, a page of all my dermatopathology videos, slides, sample reports, all of it there organized by entity. And I have the same down here for bone and soft tissue. So if you go here and you're like, I want to see a myxoid liposarcoma. So then just you know, hit Control F and search the page. Mix, oh gosh. I, <laughs> <laughs> touch typing. I have to relearn it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I just have videos. I, I do have some digital slides. I just need to post them. But um, in any case, you can search, OK? But I do have a video here that shows in detail some, uh, what the classic myxoid liposarcoma looks like, OK? And it, it, with comparison, is quite different than this. The other problem is that this tumor sometimes expresses CD34. Uh, this particular case was mostly negative. But because of that, the uh, fat entrapment, you could potentially think a little bit about dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. Again, not really, but you might wonder if there was CD34, bland spindle cells, fat entrapment, you could consider it. Usually you're going to have a more swirled story form pattern for DFSP. And I've seen dilated prominent a staghorn or hemangioparasitic vessels in DFSP. I've never seen one that I can recall with these little delicate, you know, prominent branching vessels. So I feel like this tumor doesn't look like much else. So if you see one, now you'll be like, oh, that's that thing. I mean, the first time I saw one, I was like, oh, that's angiofibroma of soft tissue. It just, nothing else looks like it really. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a good point. Solitary fibrous tumor can have the variable cellularity, can certainly have myxoid change, and occasionally can have the little small branching vessels. So if you had any doubt about that, you could do STAT-6. That's a good idea um, to, to consider for ruling out because it could look similar to this. Thank you, that's a great point. Very rare to see those in the skin, but we're talking about very rare things. So, you know, rare stuff happens sometimes. Okay, the, I have the CD34 here. Um, and the main reason here is just to highlight the background vascular network. So in this case, you can see CD34 is mostly negative with only some very focal staining, which would be an argument against solitary fibrous tumor here. But you're, you're right that you could definitely have morphologic overlap. And you can see most of the spindle cells are negative, whereas the endothelial cells of those vessels are staining nicely and look at how incredibly vascular this lesion is. So these tumors have um, a translocation involving AHRR. Show you. Did I put it in here? An NCOA2. So if you need to test uh, for the molecular, you can, but I think. Uh, once you've ruled out the other possibilities, it has a very distinct uh, appearance. Um, and I think I did include um, the other angiofibromas mentioned here, which would be uh, cutaneous angiofibroma, also known as fibrous papule, which occurs on the nose of adults, very common, or rarely in kids with tuberous sclerosis. Totally unrelated, looks different. Nasopharyngeal angiofibroma in uh, adolescent males in the nasal cavity with large vessels. Totally unrelated and looks different, but still called angiofibroma. And then cellular angiofibroma of the genitals, which is an important tumor to know because it is related to spindle cell pleomorphic lipoma. So I, I love to teach those together because they have very much overlapping morphology and they have the same molecular abnormality, RB1 loss. So spindle cell pleomorphic lipoma, 
cellular angiofibroma of the genitals, which is not nearly this vascular. It looks more like a spindle cell lipoma. Mammary myofibroblastoma, and a new one, superficial acral fibromyxoma, or digital fibromyxoma is the other name. All of those have overlapping morphology and loss of RB1. So confusing, frustrating names, but you can learn four tumors for the price of one. So why not, right? It's, rarely do you get that in pathology. So when you do, take it, buy, okay? <laughs> buy it. Thank you, I like that. I don't know, I don't, my jokes that work on Americans, I don't know if they'll work on French audience. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, you guys are my beta testing group to see how these jokes work in a, in a wider audience. Just like my, my kids usually laugh at my jokes out of pity, basically. And I think my residents do the same. So I have three daughters, so I can make dad jokes now. I've earned, I've earned the right to make dad jokes.